Hello. All right. So there was a question about that canary application. I'm wanting to see that code. All right. So let's get started. So I use for that a rapid application development uh, IDE called XOJO. Here is the website. I'll make sure to, to link that xojo.com. And it allows you to build a uh, cross-platform application. Uh, I personally have a love-hate relationship with this, um, but that is for me to uh, work out. But it is a rapid application, drag and drop, and um, it's all right for what it is. So let's get started, right? So with that uh, canary, uh, IDS in uh, Python. Um, it sent uh, pretty much just raw JSON to a web server. And uh, I'll show you how we accomplished that. So Exojo uh, requires a license to compile or to build, right? To build the various different platforms but you're able to download it and install it and run it locally and debug it without having a license. So uh, I'm going to do a canary and make sure the project is selected as web. I will go okay. And that um, Python app or uh, Python code uh, sent calls to HTTP whack whack and then we had uh, an IP address right and then uh, it was like colon 8080 I think doesn't really matter but here's the important part and this is specific to uh, Exojo it did API Right? And that's a really bad P, but that's a P. Let's fix that. I don't like that. I'm going to fix that, right? So, boom. P, API. Whack. And then question mark. Oof. Well, that's, that's bad, too. My goodness. I'm having a bad day. All right. Whack. Question mark. And then that uh, raw JSON, right? So that's what that Python code did. And um, the IP address was a, uh, this Exojo uh, web app running. So let's, let's get at it, right? So once you have Exojo open, uh, you're presented with this IDE. On the left-hand side, you have your basic controls. On the uh, left-hand side is where the um, modules, functions, and things are kept. So here, um, I'm just going to say, if I were to build it, I wanted to build it for Windows. I wanted to build it for Linux and not their, their cloud. I'm going into shared. And this is just a personal preference of mine. Going down here to where it says uh, deployment type, and I'm going to pick standalone, and I'm going to verify the debug port. So it is 8080. I'm going to keep that in the back of my head. And then I'm going to go back to the app area up here on the uh, left-hand side. And I'm going to say, I want to handle a new and that event that I'm going to handle is their uh, special URL. And that special URL is going to handle API and is also going to handle special. We're going to do uh, API. So we're going to say OK. And it builds this new event. And in here, uh, I want to do something like uh, if the request coming in is greater than or less than nil, 
then we are going to create a temporary variable called temp and it is of type string and we're going to assign temp of request dot uh, it's like request URL I think uh, no request dot query string and this will make sense in a second so once temp is that I'm going to send uh, that information to a variable that will define an app as a, just a, a placeholder. So I'm going to say uh, property. This is kind of going to be like a uh, public global scope. I'm going to call this, I don't know, text R because it's going to be a uh, an array. And my array is going to be of type string. So basically a container of many different strings. And that's an app. So I need to jump back to handle special URL. And I'm going to assign app text R. And since that's an array, I think I can just do something like append. Well, add a add row. Well, okay, so they the um they're saying to use add row and that is temp all right so when the query comes in because we're going to be using remember http whack whack right ip colon right 80 80 api and then question, right? And then whatever that query string is. And that's how we're going to cheat, right? Um, this is just a, a proof of concept. So we're going to cut a, some corners. This isn't really going to handle a lot of uh, your traditional API stuff. What this basically board, uh, was for was just a reader board. And so we've got that query string and we're gonna shove it into that uh, text array. And then we're gonna to come back down to that web page. And this is that drag and drop part. And we're going to drag and drop just a plain old text area. It's just a spot to keep um, strings. And so we're gonna make it nice and big. And then uh, I want to come to this inspector and while I have that inspector open, I'm going to anchor all corners. And that should be good for that. So now we need to read this array. And whenever this web page is open, I want to do a method. Or, ah, here we go. Or, yeah, okay, let's do a method. I'm going to call this something like, I don't know, pin text. And in here, we need to do a loop. Let's do a loop. So uh, we're going to do something like for each, uh, nope, for each item as string in our app text r we are going to append it to web page one text area append text and it is of item but i want to do an end of line now end of line is their special nomenclature for the various different ends of lines of uh, operating systems. So like for Windows, it's like a, a carriage return line feed. Um, I forget what Mac is. No, I think it's just a carriage return. But this right here is an internal method that handles all of that uh, cool stuff. So 
uh, after our text, we're going to append an, an end of line so we get a new line in our text area. So after this, um, totally up to you. Um, we can say something like, well, let's do the uh, app text R and we're going to remove all rows. All right. I'm totally up to you. Um, but we need to go back to the web page and we need to say something to the effect of a new method. No, not a new method. I want to handle an event. So let's go back to the web page. I'm going to go up to here. And this isn't necessarily a tutorial on Exojo. I can't remember if I uh, said that earlier, but uh, I just want to uh, say that uh, we are not going through the nuts and bolts of this. I'm just showing you that proof of concept. So, all right, so we got the web page. The event that I want to handle is shown. So whenever that page is shown, we want to come down here and we want to say uh, append text. Just do this method here. And uh, I don't want to keep refreshing. So I'm going to come to our uh, library. I'm going to drag a timer and make sure the timer is selected. Go to the inspector. And I want to say, I don't know, your period is every 10 seconds. You're going to add text. And the uh, mode is multiple. You're just going to keep firing. And in the, uh, I don't know, let's say in the shown event. Let's do something like this. Uh, every time you are shown, I want to do timer one, enabled is true, just to make sure that timer is going to start to fire. And in our timer, I want to create uh, another event. We're going to handle that, and it's of action, right? We're going to do some action jackson. And in that uh, timer action, we are going to say a pin text. Right, so every time you fire, we're going to do this code here. And let's jump back to handle special URL. All right. So we get the request. It's actually full. So we're going to create a variable of temp or excuse me, we're going to create a variable temp as string, and we're going to assign temp that request query, and then we're going to append temp to our text R, and at the end of this, I'm just going to do return true. Cool. All right. So, Let's see if it blows up, right? And love-hate relationship. This particular uh, version has a bug. So I'm going to manually fix that. And look at that. All right, we're going to say attack detected. Dun, dun, dun. And notice that it is a question mark, right? We're, we're cheating, we're doing a query and we're just capturing that query. And then let's open up another page, right? And this time we're just going to go directly into that. There we go, cool. So let's go back to here, send another, uh, all right? All right, Attack. detected. All right, so, uh, attack detective, and let's say something like, I don't know, spoof, boom. All right, 
cool. You notice when I refreshed, it deleted. So let's go refresh, delete because of that line in here in the exposure of code saying basically to remove everything in that uh, array. So come back to here. Let's do, I uh, always love this Smurf. Smurf. Dun, dun, dun. All right. And then just another attack. All right. And it's pretty much anything that you want to send. I mean, this could be straight up raw JSON or XML. Um, it's just a, a string that we're keying off of here in that special URL, right? So uh, from uh, a rapid application development perspective, I use this Exojo. Um, as you can see, it's very uh, similar to like Visual Basic. Um, and uh, that's pretty much what I used for this uh, proof of concept. Uh, hope you found this uh, very informational. If you have uh, any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, don't hesitate to ask. I appreciate you, man. Bye.